Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Olivia Ray. How are you doing, Olivia? I'm good, thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. So, Olivia, we're going to do some training skills, tips that you're going to give that young players, professionals, etc. can learn and engage from. Uh, before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about your career. 76 caps of Scotland, yep. current Middlesex women's cricketer. Talk us through how you got into the sport. Um, yeah, well, actually, I got into the sport a little bit by chance. Um, when I was growing up, my brother played and I went along to the local club where he had his practice and I was sort of just on the sidelines throwing a ball, catching it, and the coach said, get involved. So um, I never looked back since then, really grateful to that particular coach. Um, it wasn't maybe seen to be a sport for girls, um, and it's just so good to see that that's changed now. And how do you see like the women's game developing? Um, it's obviously developed a lot um, over the last few years. If you look at the sellout crowd at the MCG for the Women's World Cup final, um, new professional contracts in now for domestic players um, in England, which is amazing. So I do see that um, there's not contracts for every person in the domestic team at the moment, but maybe that will, will grow. So we've got full squads of um, girls and women being paid to play cricket, which would be amazing. Um, more visibility on, on TV and on social media and yeah, more profile of these athletes, um, which, is, which is what they deserve. And the Middlesex fans obviously know about your skill set, but for those that don't, um, talk us about your greatest strengths in the game, batting, bowling, etc. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of grew up as a as a bowler. Um, had an injury, so the, the bowling element is, is still there, the foundations. But um, it led me to practice my batting a lot. So in recent years, I have been a, a specialist batter in in the teams that I've played for. Um, I've always been a, a dynamic and um, positive fielder. I love to throw myself around. I enjoy fielding. I want the ball to come to me. Um, and yeah, I look to get run outs, I look to get catches and stop boundaries and um, I absolutely love it. And what would you say is your best moment in the sport so far? Best moment in the sport so far? Um, I mean, it was, it was pretty cool to go out and, and, and play at Lords, um, a ground which I kind of never dreamt I would play on. Um, it was a rain affected five over game, it wasn't maybe... Um, the, the ideal way to go about playing at Lords, but just to be on there, I feel the ball, and uh, yeah, I'll always remember that moment, and, and I hope that it does become the norm for for more girls and females to, to be playing on on the home of cricket. And then talk us about your coaching business. We'll obviously put all the links, descriptions in the below. So if you're so anyone anyone wants to get in touch, they can. But yeah, talk us through it. Um, yeah, so in terms of my, my coaching business, uh, it's about just over a year old now. Um, and I, I founded it really because um, of my passion for coaching and um, in order to be flexible around my playing as well. And um, so, yeah, so I wanted to, to go out and get my brand out there, get my philosophy out there and really start helping cricketers and the next generation of cricketers, but whilst continuing to also play. Um, I do believe I'm still learning a lot um, from playing and I do bring that to my coaching and it's good to sort of say you know when I was playing at the weekend or um, when I was facing this person and kind of talk with the players as a player to player level as well as a coach. And you mentioned philosophy there, what is your philosophies when it comes to coaching? Yeah so um, my philosophy is very much about coaching the player and the individual so I'm not just coaching the sport of cricket I'm I've got a person in front of me who has had a life up until that moment and that, that has shaped them and it's really important to understand you know what makes them tick how they feel what is something that makes them kind of uh, thrive and what maybe w would have the opposite effect so really trying to understand the player is so so important uh, in order to bring out the best in them um, I believe in the, the all-round cricketer so thinking about um, technical elements uh, the tactical side and the mental side as well um, really 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 big on the mental side and I do believe it needs to be trained equally as much as um, the physical side as well so really really big on mindset and the mental side of the game so something that I believe is really important is that we have consistent routines with what we do so whether we're bowling batting fielding we have a consistent approach to it and and that involves the thoughts in our head as well so if we're at the top of, uh, of our run-up and we we're taking a big breath in if that's what works for us and we might say to ourselves um, something like 
um, run up straight or focus or it could be a number of things that works for that individual but it's just being consistent with that and just recognizing the role that the mind and, and the thoughts that you have play um, so for instance when batting I say watch the ball watch the ball watch the ball that's all I say and, I, and it clears my mind um, and I don't think about anything else I and mean, it really really works for me so um, yeah and, and it's also about um, being mentally prepared and, 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 and helping the players that I work with um, deal with pressure as opposed to um, getting to a point where you're having to help a player with their, their mental health for instance if they've actually started the struggle it's it's trying to help players um, and prepare them so we don't actually get to that point and um, it's always it's creating little pr to pressure um, situations in training but but supporting them and saying it doesn't matter if you fail just give it your best shot whatever happens you know I support you and and just being really really positive um, and, and, and and realistic as well and and, and, and being honest with players about their, their ability and where they're at and, and giving them really meaningful steps um, um, and manageable, manageable steps um, so that they, they progress and, and feel empowered. But being realistic that, you know, um, playing cricket at the high level it has its pressures and, um, and to, to make sure that they, they know that, that there is a life outside of, of that and that um, you're, you're talking about how it's not so much the outcome that's important but the process. So we're focusing on working hard and doing our best and those characteristics of us as, as human beings is important outside of cricket and that it could be taken outside the game. So, you know, if your career was to be cut short due to injury or if you, if you weren't to, to, to perform, it's about knowing that you've given it your best and that you've worked hard and that how you make people feel and who you are as a person is, is the most important thing. And I do bring that into my coaching and I think it's really important. And then if anyone wants to get in touch with you, about coaching is it just via your website twitter yeah um direct messages are open on instagram and twitter and um, if you go to the website and um, you can see the email um really really happy to chat to people um you know my approach like i said it's very much tailored towards the individual and i want to get to know a person go on a journey with them and really really passionate about developing um a person's game and, and honest about whether I'm the right coach for them and, and uh, I just yeah I really encourage people to get in touch if they if they want to develop their game and, and we can start a conversation and, and see if I'm the right coach perfect can't wait to get into these training drills and tips let's go so when I'm coaching bowling I tend to look at three key areas and the first one is staying nice and aligned so from the top of your run-up all the way through you want to stay in a nice straight line and everything going towards the target. So one of the key ways of practicing alignment is having something, whether it's a line of cones, like I've got here, or a line of string, so that you can run in between it. So you can practice that just to make sure that you are staying nice and aligned. Second point I like to focus on when coaching bowling is staying nice and tall in the action. So as we're running up, we're staying tall and we're staying tall throughout really important that we lock our core on and we're really strong because there's a lot of force coming from the ground up uh, which can lead, lead you to to gain injuries uh, in your lower back so staying really nice and controlled with the core and staying tall the third point is the completion of the action so we're running up nice and aligned staying tall and when we release it we're completing it this just will really help with taking the ball and your momentum through the crease and to where you want the ball to go So when it comes to coaching batting, I've probably got three main principles or main areas that I focus on. The first is a very technical one and that is balance. So you have to be balanced on impact when you play a shot and with balance you get power and you get control. So really, really, really important. And I do have um, a drill that I use a lot um, from, from both the beginning up to more advanced players in the game which, which can test your balance. So my second point is probably more of a tactical point and how we train. So there's always a purpose to your training, um, replicating the game as, as much as possible. So you can set up targets to hit through that replicate scoring runs. So we're not just drilling a shot, we're always thinking about well, where am I actually trying to hit this in order to score runs? And then when we go to the game, we're prepared for that. I think the other thing I will say about batting is that we are all individual. So some things that will work for others um, might not work for you. Um, so in terms of stance, this will vary, but as long as you're balanced and comfortable and relaxed is really, really important. And in terms of bat swing and making contact with the ball, 
I believe it's really important to have it as a smooth motion. So for me, I'm very relaxed here. And when the ball is, is released, I come up and a swing through is one motion. Some batters might already start in this position. Um, so it's something to, to have a look at, but really, really important that we're dipping that shoulder and swinging through. So I'll just show again for me, very relaxed here. And as the ball is rolled, I'm coming up, my shoulder's dipping and I'm going through and I'm getting that swing and momentum. So one of the drills that I use a lot to practice balance is jumping over some cones and landing. When you land, you'll be in your balanced position. You can also use a hurdle or anything basically to jump over. So once you've landed, you then hit the ball. So once you've jumped over the cones or the hurdle, you can get somebody, if there's somebody with you, just to give you a little push, just to test that balance and that strength. And you should find that you have landed in a strong position. It also tests your head position, which is really important. If you land and your head goes one way, you tend to fall. So you've got to really keep that head central and that core strong and you'll be in a really strong position.